Well, thank you very much for uh, being here today um, again. Um, I will do my best to uh, make your uh, time worthwhile. Um, this is a very, very exciting period to talk about. I have a lot of material to um, share with you so that um, I don't take much of your Sunday afternoon. Um, all the same, the uh, presentation is going to be on my academia um, profile. And um, we're also recording this, I believe. Um, Julian is recording it and it's going to be on YouTube as well. So um, feel free to uh, review the, um, the material later. But at the moment, let's start with the presentation. The classical um, coins um, start um, uh, with the end of the Persian Wars, actually. Um, Persians are um, defeated uh, by the, um, the Western um, allies and, and um, there is a rather relative calm. And, um, but the st stylistically um, um, archaic um, uh, renditions continue well into the classical period. Um, however, um, the art of the classical period is characterized by joyous freedom of movement and expression. That is the best way to uh, define uh, the art um, in this period. Of course, um, artistic uh, movements uh, are also reflections of political uh, and economic um, uh, developments. Um, this new um, uh, age um, celebrates mankind as an independent um, entity. You can see that uh, individualistic um, profile uh, in um, uh, art and, um, and, and also the um, uh, mint um, uh, productions of um, individual cities. Uh, during this period, artists began to expand the formal aesthetic boundaries while they worked in um, expressing the human figure in a more naturalistic manner. They were able to replace the strict asymmetry of the figure with a free flowing form more true to life. Um, presentation is not moving the way I prepared it, uh, but let's see, okay. While various animal representations continued to be the symbols of some cities, many adopted various representations of gods and goddesses on their coinage. There is a constant moment in figures and there are, they are more expressive rather than only being symbolic. Look at this um, uh, little uh, baby um, um, here. Um, um, on a uh, Falkian coin or um, uh, it, the movement is um, obvious. The child is sitting, uh, one knee is up and the body is twisting uh, to um, his um, left and one hand is holding a tuna fish. And uh, here is um, a, a warrior um, in an attacking stance. Uh, and here I have, I, I love this um, coin. Uh, here um, is one of the earliest representation, rep representations of uh, a ballerina, I believe, a dancer. And uh, popular mythological figures also find space on coins during this period. However, the boundaries in rendering the coin dies are completely forced to the utmost um, edges in this period, creating the most amazing examples of the classical art style, which were to inspire many artworks during and after the Renaissance. Um, the classical period sculpture was more of a magician than an artist. Uh, he transcended ordinary subjects into ordinary universal science. Moreover, in the process, he reversed thousands of years of artistic tradition when he shifted the focus from the supernatural and unknown to more earthly matters, which was the first Renaissance. You can see the reflections uh, of 
part on coins. I um, came across this interesting coin and it rem immediately reminded me of um, this famous uh, painting. And, and it is amazing how um, ancient artists uh, discovered um, uh, perspective uh, and uh, expression. And, and they did this not on a huge canvas as Leonardo did um, on this painting, but this is a very, very small, tiny coin. It's only 20 millimeters. And, and look at the expression in the face, uh, three quarter left facing um, female uh, uh, head with an incredible um, uh, expression uh, in her face. So um, when you read um, art history uh, books and or you know modern um, history um, books, uh, they constantly talk about how perspective was discovered in the Renaissance and how it um, improved and developed uh, during the 17th, 18th centuries, this and that. Um, those are books written by people who um, know nothing about ancient art. And um, all they need to do is look at coins, ancient coins, and they will find um, a lot of answers to their questions. And the, the constant movement is, is visible on uh, the coins, uh, and many of them uh, you can simply trace to certain um, sculptural um, artworks um, in ancient times. And the, the, the truth is this joyful, um, these joyful depictions of animals, mythological figures, and human representations um, look almost uh, three-dimensional. Uh, look at this, uh, this space of Dionysus here. It's, it's almost popping out. You almost feel that Dionysus is going to turn his head and we're going to see the other um, side of his uh, face. And the same is true here uh, for the, um, uh, the naked hoplite. The, the hoplite is just about to move and we can expect the next move from uh, that. And the same is true for uh, the silentness here sitting. And I just wait for him to um, uh, start drinking. It's, it's an amazing um, uh, rendition of movement on um, uh, such a small uh, space. Now, we all read history, of course. Um, there are many books um, that um, are famously uh, thought to be uh, the best uh, resources for um, history. However, uh, when we look deeper into what they tell us, um, uh, at least I come, um, become very, very uh, disappointed. Why do I say that? Um, because of uh, what I read uh, and what I see on coins don't uh, match. They don't uh, compare. Okay, I admitted another person to join. Um, people write history. And uh, to be a historian, you don't really need uh, a degree. Even if you have a degree, uh, it doesn't make any difference because um, it's mostly um, interpretation work. And sometimes guesswork uh, takes precedence over interpretation. And without any material, uh, when we uh, read a book by um, a reputable professor or teacher or scholar, we tend to agree and accept. However, um, they're not always right. Why do I say that? Um, I would definitely recommend that you go to the link here uh, and, and read further what these people um, had to say about 
how they distorted history, how they made up, they didn't distort the history actually, how they made up uh, certain historical uh, facts. This is really interesting. Um, this um, scholar says, uh, all the months worth um, of all nighters working on the project explained that the whole of ancient Greek architecture was based on buildings in Washington, D.C., including a bank across the street from uh, the coffee shop where they met to bat around ideas about mythology and whatever. These are all um, famous uh, scholars from very, very reputable universities. We picked Greece because we figured nobody would ever go there to check it out. And uh, have you ever seen the place? It's a dump. It's like an abandoned gravel pit infested with cats. Oh, poor Greeks. If only they um, could find out what these people uh, say about them, you know, in books and in reality. It's of course, um, I'm not going to bash the um, scholars and any further, and, and I, I will go back to the historical realities and how we can um, find the realities, and coins um, come handy um, in this case because they are solid. Um, they, um, they will not fool you unless you, you know, uh, are, um, delusional and, and um, uh, misinterpret what they're telling you. The thing is, when uh, the, by the time the coins started to appear, um, a very, very um, uh, important um, source of information started to disappear. And I'm talking about clay tablets. Um, uh, papyr papyrus, um, uh, uh, begins to um, take the place of clay tablets uh, in the um, uh, starting with the sixth, fifth century uh, BC. Um, there are there are thousands, of, literally thousands, of clay tablets from the Assyrians, from the Babylonians, from the Hittites um, that um, um, that survive um, to our day. And um, there is so much information on them. Um, and you can see the scale of trade, um, not only um, government business, uh, which is important to know um, as well, but there is a lot of um, information about um, trade transactions and um, the, um, uh, the movement of goods and, uh, and payment systems. Whereas um, when the um, papyrus took uh, the place of clay tablets, papyrus is um, a, a perishable uh, medium, and um, many of them didn't survive. Uh, and we lost some very, very valuable uh, information um, thanks to this um, wonderful invention um, that, you know, um, uh, but the, the people of uh, that era must have thought at that time. So technological inventions are not always so good. Um, you can simply relate that to um, the um, uh, development of computer technology. Uh, you had floppy disks and then you had CDs and you have now uh, flash disks and they all tend to disappear. Uh, we just need to be careful and, um, and, and simply um, uh, transfer uh, our information into uh, the new medium. Anyways, let's continue uh, with our presentations. Uh, finally, the coins. I'll start from the West, um, and, and I'm not going to weigh on uh, each um, coin, but the idea here is to put the material in front of you and, um, and instigate um, uh, and, and a thought uh, to further um, investigate, study, uh, and learn. Um, the, the reason why I wanted to do this um, is uh, that when we don't have the whole picture in front of us and, and focus on um, one coin or two coins or one city or one region, 
we uh, we lose the big picture, and um, and there is a lot to be learned by uh, keeping the whole picture in front of us uh, when we study um, history. Uh, and most of the time, um, I respect and um, appreciate um, individual historical research. However, I always approach them uh, with a certain degree of skepticism. And, and most of the time when I research uh, or further research um, a paper, I find a lot of interesting material um, that, that is inconsistent with what that historian uh, purports. So here we go. I start in um, um, Campania, uh, Neapolis, modern um, Naples. Um, they uh, have some incredible coins to um, show off. Um, here we have the head of uh, Nymph, uh, Partenope, uh, with a wonderful rendition of hairdo and um, jewelry. And on the reverse, we have the uh, man-headed bull, uh, traditionally known to represent the river god. Uh, the famous river god Achilleus in, in Greece um, uh, was well known in, in ancient history and uh, many numismatists tend to um, um, identify these man-headed bull Achilleus everywhere, which is incorrect. Um, in in uh, the um, coin uh, iconography, man-headed bull simply represented uh, a river. Uh, just because you know uh, the uh, river Achilleus and there is a representation of a uh, man-headed bull uh, in that city doesn't necessarily mean that all uh, man-headed uh, bull renditions simply depict um, Achilleus. And here is an example of that and a wonderful uh, representation of the same um, uh, deity uh, on, on this bronze coin. And uh, on the coin, uh, coins of uh, Kimae, uh, you have a very interesting uh, um, picture on the reverse. Uh, it, there is a mussel shell. Of course, it's a city uh, uh, by the sea. Um, so they decided to adopt mussel as um, one of their um, symbols. And then Kerberos. Uh, or some people um, call it Cerberus um, on, on it. And again, being a, a, a sea uh, site city, uh, they have a skilla um, on the reverse of uh, another coin. I go to Calabria. Um, this is where you see the, uh, the movement. Um, uh, you see the um, hero uh, found their Taras seated on, on a dolphin, and there is a scallop shell uh, below. You see, they didn't have to uh, put a scallop um, shell here, but there was space to add uh, another uh, item. And the uh, coin die engraver was not shy or lazy to add another item. And also, um, artistically, leaving a space like this empty um, would have been awkward. They didn't want to see that. No one, I'm sure, asked them to do that, or no one insisted them and, and forced them to do that. But an artist has a responsibility uh, to his um, profession, and he feels that he needs to do something about it. And you see the same thing here uh, on the reverse. There is a movement. The figure is not just sitting as you um, saw in uh, the archaic period. In archaic period, you have either standing uh, or sitting figures. They don't move. Um, that is the art of the uh, Assyrians. That's the art of the Egyptians. That's the art of uh, the Hittite. And um, they don't move. However, you see, in every phase of rendition, there is a certain moment. This 
uh, the, the person, Taras, again, and as it is identified, um, is um, sitting, uh, the legs are almost crossing, and uh, one uh, foot is on a stool, and the hand is extending. There is an incredible movement here. And here is another uh, coin that uh, is extremely fascinating. Why did they have to um, uh, speak so much? Uh, here you have um, a young uh, person, most likely uh, a male, seated on a horse, crowning uh, him with a, a wreath, uh, the, the horse. Uh, below the horse, there is a nude boy cleaning the horse's left front. It is absolutely telling us uh, something very important. Otherwise, it would have not been on the coin of this city. And on the reverse, you, you have, again, the founder of the city, the legendary founder of the city, I should say. Yet, uh, despite the, um, the legend about Taras, um, some people believe that the city was founded by Hercules. And to that effect, you see this um, famous uh, Nemean line wrestling uh, scene. So even in ancient times, uh, on the coinage of the same city, you can see the influences of different parties, different parties uh, stakeholders pushed their own agendas. And, and, and lucky us, we have this material at our disposal to review and make sense of them. I can easily say uh, Metapontian is my favorite city. And uh, I would like um, to see that you uh, join me uh, in that um, idea in that this city so far uh, is one of the few that uh, adopted the representation or likeness uh, of democracy uh, as a coin type on the augers of their coins. Uh, and, and it is also spelled out. Uh, they simply uh, want you to know that it is Democratia that they are presenting to you. And, um, and the artists um, from early on um, began to um, sign their um, artwork. And here um, is another coin uh, with the same, um, uh, by the same artist, most likely. And um, here uh, on the overs die, you can see the uh, name of the artist. Poseidonia, um, as the name suggests, simply adopted the um, uh, figure, figures of um, uh, Poseidon. And um, you see the same uh, movement on these coins. And then the Heraclea, as the name, name suggests, um, they simply claim that they were um, founded by Hercules, and that's why uh, they have uh, various uh, forms of uh, Nemean line uh, fight scenes on their coins. Croton uh, is a very interesting city uh, that um, adopted some very, very different um, um, god representations in the form of animals and, and other mythological um, scenes on their coins. Um, I'll just go back here, and uh, this is a rare um, rendition of um, an eagle uh, perching on uh, the head of a stag. And um, later on, you see similar um, scenes on the coinage of other cities, eagle perching on uh, the heads of other animals. But this one uh, is one of the earliest um, renditions of um, Zeus um, 
represented in uh, the guise of an eagle uh, standing on uh, a stag. And uh, on the reverse, you have a, a tripod. It's just a simple tripod, maybe. Um, of course, when we see a tripod, we immediately think of um, Apollo, um, as it is one of its, um, uh, one of Apollo's um, attributes. But on other coins, oops, come on. Yeah, we, we see more of uh, the similar um, topics, uh, an extraordinary, um, example of uh, this um, coin. Um, too bad the head of the um, eagle is um, off plan. Yet uh, you have um, you have it. Uh, the whole body is complete there, um, standing on uh, um, a thunderbolt. And on the reverse, you have a very detailed um, rendition of the tripod and. Interestingly, the coin designer simply um, uh, decided to put um, a Nike um, flying and, and um, placing a wreath on uh, the, the tripod, or hanging, I should say. It's not really um, putting the uh, wreath on it, but hanging it on um, uh, the handle, maybe. And on um, another um, coin, um, you have um, Hercules seated on rock covered with lion skin, uh, holding a um, cup and club ball on ground. Of course, we know that Hercules completed his, um, uh, his tasks and uh, he's resting and uh, he's drinking. And um, uh, unlike we uh, were made to believe, uh, they didn't always drink uh, wine. Um, he might be drinking uh, beer or, or, or something else. Um, and this is one of um, the most interesting coins. Um, and I love uh, seeing them and, and admiring uh, them each time I come across. Um, on the um, overs, um, you have again um, Hercules, and on the reverse, child Apollo aiming arrow at the python on the sides of the tripod. It's amazing. Why did the um, coin die engraver have to uh, pick up such a difficult topic? Because he could. The answer is very simple, because he could. Um, the the child here uh, is facing and turning to his left and aiming. He could have simply um, uh, done this uh, facing uh, to right, and it would have been much easier to um, um, to render it. However, the artist decided to show us that it's a little boy, and um, with his uh, private parts, he wanted to give us a glimpse of its time, how the um, kits uh, looked like. And then there is some kind of um, um, addressing uh, running um, over uh, his left tie. Why did they have to give so much detail? Because they could. Here I have um, Messana um, on Sicily. Uh, it's a very interesting city that um, decided that Hermes um, uh, would be the best deity for, for their city. And from early on, you see the attributes of Hermes uh, on the coins of this city. And uh, from the early period, uh, it's the continuation of the classic um, uh, archaic period, uh, rather rigid figures, um, even though um, this dates to the early um, classical late archaic period. But uh, into well into the um, the classical period, you see uh, the the representation uh, changes completely. It becomes more elaborate, um, more free and uh, artistically um, 
more impressive in any way that you um, you can imagine. And <clears throat> the the same continues. The same topic continues on other coins. Um, and you see, um, on this coin, you only have a hair, and on this one, you have the hair with a grasshopper. And it was not enough for the artist. Uh, the artist had to create something different. And, and of course, you know, um, even though these coins are dated to 420, 413, um, they didn't necessarily um, uh, appear uh, at the same time. Uh, however, uh, there was uh, a strong will to uh, to produce something different. And this is true for uh, many uh, true artists or many uh, true professionals. Um, whatever you do, you don't always do the same way. You always improve, you think of what you can, what else you can do, and you add that to your, uh, to your work. And uh, we see that um, on the coins of Mecena uh, in every way. And on this one, um, he has the head of um, Pan um, under the hair. Now we go to um, Acragas. Um, it produced um, some of the most remarkable, um, artful um, coins uh, in the classical period. Um, Sicily is a large island, but it's not that large when you have so many cities. Um, they're a prosperous and um, strong uh, economy to uh, mint um, coins. And, and it's only normal that they, uh, they um, are influenced by one another, yet they had to be different. Here on the um, overs, you have um, two eagles um, uh, holding a dad hair. Uh, maybe they are simply sending a message to uh, the other um, city that um, had a hair, live hair. Um, uh, all the time, but this one uh, uh, is that. And on the uh, reverse, you have um, a, a nymph on a galloping quadriga, uh, and there is a Nike running and crowning the nymph, and there is a crab in exergy. This city uh, minted gold coins, and uh, when you um, listen to uh, the um, regular um, uh, historian. Oh, this is um, to finance um, such and such military campaign. I disagree. Uh, just because we only hear about the uh, 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 the wars and battles and this and that uh, doesn't necessarily mean that all coins were uh, minted. You know why? Why would they have to pay in in gold um, their soldiers or to finance their campaigns? Who was going to use this coin, and how would they um, how would they spend it if um, it were just you know for a certain purpose? Uh, coins simply were used to facilitate all kinds of payments, whether it is goods or services. And uh, among the goods and services, among the services that we get uh, when we pay uh, is protection, is uh, um, you know, payment of soldiers. Yes, I, I can accept that. But whenever we see a large coin, they immediately tend to connect it to some kind of military campaign, which is absolutely ridiculous and, and uh, unacceptable. And also, if you're just going to pay your uh, soldier, uh, would you work so hard to create such an artful um, uh, piece? Look at this one. Uh, you have, again, two eagles, the same um, representation here. On the, uh, on the reverse, you have a skilla 
uh, with the lower part, uh, lower part were, uh, in, in the form of two uh, dogs. And, uh, and, and the uh, hair streaming, uh, obviously rushing through um, the water. Why would you have to uh, go through the trouble to create something this artful just to pay your soldier who is going to probably die tomorrow? So um, th that's why um, I look at uh, these coins and I think and I um, don't simply swallow everything uh, the uh, this historians uh, tell me about uh, the historical uh, events. Akragas also um, um, issued some experimental um, currencies in uh, very different forms. That also tells us um, how the uh, the the uh, uh, economic uh, interactions um, were uh, strong. Um, bronze coins simply um, or bronze uh, simply uh, considered to be um, fake money uh, really uh, because gold um, and silver had in, 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 intrinsic value and you could simply uh, value a certain uh, good or a certain service uh, with uh, gold, um, gold and silver. However, bronze is very different. Um, and I believe bronze was used for uh, local uh, business. And um, these coins were only accepted within a small um, uh, geographical area, only maybe in the city of Akragas. And, um, and it's, um, it's the loaded value was accepted by a small group of people and it simply facilitated small business. That's why they are extremely important. And the same kind of um, artistic rendition uh, is seen on bronze coins. So uh, the notion that, oh, uh, it's a valuable um, metal, that's why they, um, um, they employed great art uh, on silver or gold is not correct. Why do you mean? As you see, the art here is no inferior to the, um, the, that of the, uh, the, the silver um, coin. You can see the same quality uh, art on bronze coins. Here we go to Gela. Uh, again, um, um, in Sicily, uh, we have uh, the fore part of a man-headed bull, um, obviously the uh, the river god, and uh, here on um, you see the man-headed bull uh, in front of uh, which is a long corn stalk with ears, and there is a large grain of barley. And obviously, it's a city of um, uh, agriculture. Um, it simply tells us about their agricultural activities. And also it is by the sea. So you have um, a diadem head of the river god uh, with uh, fish uh, around. And, um, and then um, you have um, on the reverse again, the river god Gelas uh, with a small bull's horn. That's very interesting within an um, olive reed. Uh, so this, this literally tells us a lot about the um, uh, economic uh, activity of the city. And of course, it's, it's history because on the uh, overs you have a warrior on horse galloping, uh, spearing fallen up light. And um, yes, I agree. This coin tells us about a, a military action uh, that the city was proud to talk about. Himera, uh, again, um, you have um, silver and bronze coins coming from the city. Um, uh, again, I uh, will emphasize uh, that 
um, local uh, small business was strong and that's why they used um, small change, small bronze coins uh, to facilitate uh, the business in town. However, they also um, uh, minted some extraordinary silver coins and um, one of which um, is this one, uh, again, one of my favorites. Um, on the reverse, you have uh, the nymph uh, Himera, the, the city uh, was named after, uh, wearing a long shitong and hymation and standing holding uh, a patera from which she pours a libation over a flaming altar. That's standard. We see that a lot. But the, uh, the figure to the right is very, very unusual. It's a, a bearded satire bathing in a fountain basin, the chest dosed by a jet of water emanating from a spot in the shape of lion's head. And uh, in the uh, upper right field, you have a barley grain. It is an incredible scene. And, and it tells you so much about the um, uh, social and religious life in that city. Naxos created some uh, uh, great representations of um, the god Dionysus. From the beginning, Dionysus was uh, the chief deity um, for the city and uh, his cult. Um, is represented on both overs and uh, rivers of their coins. Um, here, um, an early classical period um, uh, example, um, head of um, Dionysus, and uh, on the reverse, the um, uh, nude and hippolic um, Silenus, uh, and here is another one with an extraordinary artful rendition of both figures. Syracuse um, is better known than um, most of the other cities that we have um, spoken about, um, mostly because of their uh, war with Athens. Um, the uh, Philhellenic um, researchers and historians love to talk about Athens. And, um, and whatever related to Athens is magnified, aggrandized, and, and you hear more about them all the time. And um, despite the fact that um, Athenians simply ruined uh, themselves uh, by their ambitious campaigns um, to the West, um, they, uh, they still talk about it, yet um, Syracuse uh, simply created um, incredibly beautiful um, coins uh, during the classical period. And they have some um, gold coins as well. And now going back to uh, military and gold um, or silver uh, issues, um, you wouldn't create something like this to pay your soldiers or to pay your uh, military campaigns or something like this. Um, yes, on the uh, obverse is a shield ornamented with a facing Gorgoneon. It simply um, tells you that um, there is some kind of a military activity, but on the reverse, you have a naked athlete removing oil from his left knee with a strigle has nothing to do with a military um, campaign. And the, this coin, again, uh, doesn't have anything to do uh, uh, with uh, a military campaign, unless you want to uh, believe that uh, the struggle between um, Heracles and um, the Nemean line um, have anything to do with that. Uh, and, and it is not, I'm not completely um, disregarding the fact that um, coins um, uh, talk about uh, military campaigns, uh, but um, attributing all coins or all uh, big um, denominations to uh, military activity is incorrect and unacceptable in my view.
then when we talk about Syracuse, of course, uh, we uh, immediately um, uh, remember uh, these uh, impressive uh, decadrons. And this is how uh, actually Syracuse became so well known. Uh, not many people simply uh, know about these uh, other coins, but everybody knows about these uh, decadrons. And um, again, you have people trying to um, connect these coins to certain um, military activities. Um, but you already know how I feel about that. I'm just going to go back to the artistic um, um, aspects of these coins. Here, the artist decided to um, put uh, his signature. Uh, I have another person uh, um, asking for admittance. And, um, and then on, on um, and here, uh, the initial uh, of his name, Kimon, and here the, the full name um, uh, is engraved. And there, there are uh, at least four um, artists that signed their coins um, in uh, Syracuse. And in other cities, you have other um, artists uh, who signed their coins. And um, I cannot uh, deny that right to them. Uh, as you see, they 100% deserve uh, to um, emphasize their uh, their individual skills by simply signing their um, their art. And um, here uh, is an interesting um, concept that we um, we understand and, and appreciate. Um, both sides are signed, but they are signed by um, different. Uh, die engravers. That means some people were, um, uh, some people excelled in uh, rendering um, uh, larger scenes and others simply um, improved their skills in um, um, engraving uh, portraits. And um, this is a wonderful example of that. Um, both um, sides were signed by two different um, die engravers. We're moving um, eastward to uh, Macedon and, and Trace, and um, I will um, introduce um, Akantos and Ainai um, in, in this um, area. Of course, uh, there are other cities in Sicily and Italy that issued coins. I'm not talking about all of them. I'm just giving you um, a, a handful of uh, examples, um, and, and I trust that you know this is going to um, simply spark an interest, um, and you will go and uh, research further. Um, again, the same movement, again the same uh, impressive um, portraits um, on uh, coinage, uh, and um, you will see uh, similar. Uh, activities by artists. Um, there are quite a few points um, signed by their um, engravers in this area um, too. And Tassos is an interesting um, city uh, uh, that um, created some very impressive um, coins. Uh, mythology uh, is strong here. I think uh, the most famous coin uh, of this city would be on uh, the naked uh, and ethopolic satire um, carrying um, a nymph uh, who is um, health uh, protesting, health submitting uh, uh, to um, uh, the satire. And, uh, and it was important for them to use this. And as it was important for them to have um, Hercules uh, on the reverse of this one, uh, with the head of Dionysus again. This is, of course, related to uh, the cult of Dionysus. And uh, this city is known or is famous for its wine exportation. And uh, it's only normal that they um, uh, adopt the, uh, the cult of Dionysus. It's a good effect. 
Amphipolis is another interesting city uh, uh, and famous city of that um, region, uh, mostly uh, head of Apollo uh, on the uh, obverse and um, a, a raised torch uh, is on the, on the reverse. This continues to be the symbol of the city well into the Hellenistic period and even uh, later. Um, a, a torch and a light uh, torch uh, is always on the coinage of this city. And Mende um, uh, adopted something completely different from the rest of the um, cities uh, in that region. And uh, they have again the cult of Dionysus represented on both sides of their coins. But on this one, it is interestingly. Uh, Dionysus uh, reclining on a donkey, and and look at this this scene. It's obviously uh, the the uh, artist considered that this scene took place uh, on a priory. You have you have a donkey. You have Dionysus uh, reclining. The Dionysus holding a contrast, and that's not enough. There's a crawl in the bush right here and you have the bush and if that is not enough there is um, an ant under the donkey. Uh, they don't simply represent um, items to uh, fill in the um, empty space. They all said something. The ant had a meaning. The, uh, the bird and with the bush, they also said something. So there was a story behind the whole scene. Uh, and and um, the artist was not um, lazy uh, to stop and not add them to, um, to his artwork. And on the reverse, um, grape wine with five grape clusters. And on um, other coins, you see uh, their um, winemaking um, industry represented in the form of an amphora. And during that time, Macedonians um, had a different uh, political system. They had they were a kingdom at that time, and their kings started to issue coins uh, in their names. And um, as expected, um, they, they are um, dull coins. I, I always despise these uh, kingdom coins because um, there is the propaganda of a certain ruler. And um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the coins are not artful, but uh, in terms of um, messages that they carry, uh, they are inferior to um, those of uh, free city-states. And, um, and uh, we, we have to simply um, look into this issue, not only from an artful perspective, but from uh, an, um, a, a political perspective as well, not only art and economic uh, perspective, but also um, uh, from a political perspective. Abdera is a very, very interesting city and the coinage of this city uh, is extremely, extremely remarkable. Um, of course, that tells us something uh, that this uh, city, uh, thanks to its, um, uh, geopolitically important location um, uh, controlled uh, a huge economic uh, movement and their coins simply um, show that because uh, they have a lot of varieties. Uh, the main topic is um, the griffin and um, on the obverses you always have the griffin and on the reverses you have various different types. So artistically um, and, and politically, the city decided to um, show themselves uh, in a certain way and, um, and they 
um, simply stuck with that. Just like the, um, the American um, uh, bills, uh, you have the same color, um, same types of um, uh, wording, yet the denominations change, the figures change, but uh, you usually see the green banknotes, and as, as soon as you see a green bank, banknote, you know that it is, uh, a, it is um, a US dollar. And uh, so the idea um, started many, many years ago uh, when certain cities simply decided that um, uh, they have a certain symbol that will represent their city. And as soon as people see uh, that, um, uh, that figure, they will simply say, oh, okay, this is a coin of the city. And on the reverse, uh, yet, uh, you have a wide variety of topics. Uh, on this one, you have a lion. On this one, you have a dolphin. Here you have Hermes. Here you have uh, Hercules. And here you have a cultus um, statue of Artemis. Uh, I showed you uh, a, a photograph of this coin at the beginning. This is uh, one of my um, uh, favorite uh, coins. Uh, I cannot stop admiring the art uh, on this coin. Uh, every time I look at it, I simply fall uh, in front of the, the person who came up with the idea and the person who um, um, uh, engraved uh, the coin to uh, mint this, uh, engraved the dies to mint this coin. Uh, it's supposed to be a um, uh, Kalatis Koi uh, dancer. They were associated with the um, pastoral festival of Apollo Carneos, and that's why they have this headdress shaped like uh, a basket or uh, modius that you see on uh, Egyptian coins mostly uh, from the Hellenistic period. Um, another version of their dance was termed Molf, and the type is clearly a punning reference to the magistrate. And on other uh, coins of the city, uh, you see equally artistically rendered uh, figures of Artemis walking. Uh, and here you have Apollo standing, holding a patera and a laurel branch and a stag uh, right next to him. So it's, um, stag is an attribute of uh, Artemis, of course, his uh, twin sister. Uh, so they tell you that they are interrelated. We go down to uh, the south and um, Thessaly, Evboia, uh, Epirus, Acarnania, Hypolia, Phocis, Otia, Megaris, Corinthia, and Attica. Uh, there are literally too many street, uh, cities that um, issued coins. Uh, so it's impossible to cover them all, but I'll, I'll give you um, a glimpse of um, what you can uh, see and, and, and further research. Larissa uh, is a, a city that uh, adopted certain uh, mythological uh, figures. Uh, the sandal of Jason with uh, in the square here and um, horse grazing um, Escada as well, uh, interestingly. And um, here is another one uh, with a um, mare and foal stand. Look at the perspective. It's obviously a smaller um, uh, horse uh, away from the uh, horse uh, that is close. Uh, they put it in such a perfect way that we know that it's a smaller horse. It's not just a another horse um, too far away, but it is um, a, a younger uh, horse. And the artist was able to uh, complete the scene uh, in the most perfect way. And here, uh, again, a four part of a horse. Um, again, that says something about that city. And uh, Pharsalos um, decided to use uh, Hermes uh, on the reverse um, of their coins. It is um, 
sometimes um, identified as um, a warrior, uh, but in my view, uh, this is not a warrior's uh, dress. It's um, is it is not a warrior in my view. Anyways, this is, it's open to discussion. Trika is interesting to me because it is the uh, birthplace of um, Asclepius. I did my master's degree in uh, the history of medicine. That's why um, I am. Um, researched and, and studied the coinage of Trika a lot. Um, even though um, the city was famous for um, the, uh, the cult of uh, the god of medicine, you see other types um, appearing on their coins. Uh, the Aeneanes uh, and Carion uh, um, uh, uh, and Mopsion were other cities uh, or regions uh, struck coins in that area. And artistic movement, as you see, uh, is widespread. The idea of creating movement and, and free um, spirit is everywhere. No matter what the system is, uh, the artistic um, movement uh, spread everywhere. Thebes. Um, was um, like um, Tassos, uh, it also uh, adopted a certain um, uh, obverse type and then added different reverses to that. And, um, and they created some of the most remarkable reverses with so many different topics, Dionysus, Hercules, uh, again, Hercules uh, strangling two serpents, and this one is uh, really interesting. A uh, female figure, sometimes identified as Harmonia, um, with a long dress seated, holding crested Corinthian helmet in her left hand, right hand on her hip, left foot resting on a footstool. It is telling us uh, a complete story. And um, again, another Hercules rendition, uh, Dionysus. Hercules um, strangling two serpents, and um, you have uh, Hercules again, mostly Hercules. So uh, the city had a strong Hercules um, cult, obviously. Um, and here you have um, a coin with a very interesting uh, uppers and rivers. They are the same. Uh, you have three half Botian shields, I bet. It was talking about the, uh, the denomination. It was simply telling us this was a three quarter of some other unit of coins. Uh, and you have the same um, uh, figures on the reverse. Athens, of course, interests um, most scholars and, um, and they deserve. Um, uh, to be so, because um, written um, history uh, um, carried on a lot of information about Athens. That's why uh, we know so much about it. And also um, a certain bias by uh, Philhellenic uh, researchers. Yet it is the reality that it was a huge um, economic power as well as a military power at that time. Um, despite their um, uh, wealth in um, silver mines, they had two uh, uh, very, very uh, big uh, silver mines that they extracted silver, and it was the main commodity of the city. It was exporting uh, silver in the forms of coins. And that's why you see uh, so many uh, Athenian coins uh, in museums, in collections, and in the market uh, all the time. And, um, and at some point, they um, uh, minted larger uh, coins, uh, decadrums, uh, over 42, kilo, um, 42 gram, uh, grams. And um, they, um, there are um, 
not many of them available, let's put it this way. Uh, however, um, they are very well known. Again, uh, researchers uh, and numismatists uh, try to uh, connect these coins to certain military campaigns, but uh, the find locations and uh, other evidence simply um, uh, disagree with um, uh, that, that notion that they were simply large denominations for larger transactions. And um, a couple months ago, um, our friend Paul um, showed us a, a video about um, a Palestinian fisherman uh, diving and finding um, more than 100 of these uh, off the coast of um, uh, uh, the Western uh, uh, Sherry, I believe. And, uh, and uh, previously, um, uh, more than 60 of them were known. So all of a sudden, uh, we have um, uh, about 200 of these available. And uh, just because we don't have uh, a certain um, coin in um, big numbers doesn't necessarily mean that they were um, commemorative issues, they were special issues. So this is a very good example of, um, uh, of how uh, skeptically we should approach historical facts uh, without you know, making firm establishments about certain facts. What is interesting about the coinage of the city is they um, use the same type all the time uh, for um, more than uh, uh, 600 years or 700 years, um, they had the same issue, just like uh, uh, the uh, uh, certain other cities. Uh, but uh, despite, um, um, despite the fact that they use the same uh, types on the overs and rivers, the artistic changes uh, are remarkable to, uh, to see. Uh, here is an early um, classical rendition of um, Athena and the Owl and um, a mid uh, classical period uh, and going downhill. Um, he's, um, artistically, uh, they're not so ambitious about uh, beauty. It's just important that they um, have the um, likeness of uh, Athena on the obverse and uh, and all on the rivers. So um, here the denomination uh, system is a little um, a bit um, important to talk about. Um, the, the reason why they have these um, coins in a certain weight uh, comes from an early uh, weight system that they uh, adapted and changed to their needs. Uh, of course, the weight systems were created um, long before uh, the invention of coinage. Um, people uh, purchased and sold um, goods uh, in weight. And um, you see that um, uh, in um, ingots, uh, bronze and tin ingots, and you see uh, that in other uh, merchandise, um, we have metal uh, merchandise uh, to examine, but we don't have perishable uh, merchandise like wheat, and, uh, wine, and, and, and um, other uh, perishable um, items to, uh, to measure. But uh, at a certain time, they use uh, uh, talent as a mass um, um, uh, a mass denomination or a mass measure of um, uh, item. And um, this uh, is a one foot cube um, uh, liquid uh, accommodating um, vessel. And the word comes from the Greek uh, carrying, since it was roughly the amount of weight that a person could carry with on his back. And the Babylonians and Sumerians had a system in which there were 60 shekels in a mina and 60 minas in a talent. 
So in um, ancient Greece, one talent roughly corresponded to 26 kilogram of silver. And this changed to um, uh, 22, 23 kilograms in um, Western um, Asia Minor, and even um, uh, lighter when you go to uh, North Africa, Egypt. Uh, so everyone had a different notion for um, a weight system, and it is only normal. And in Athens, I'm able to show you um, different denominations of coins, uh, but um, this doesn't necessarily mean the other cities didn't have um, smaller denominations. And um, depending on uh, the uh, 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 economic activity, uh, coins were always minted in multiple denominations. Uh, mostly we look at the larger denominations because uh, the art and uh, rendition uh, are better than uh, smaller ones. Uh, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean that those cities didn't have small coins. They did have uh, smaller denominations to uh, facilitate um, trade uh, in many different scales. Corinth um, it followed that, that idea uh, to um, have the same type, yet uh, each type had a different uh, side type uh, next to it. Uh, from the beginning, uh, Pegasus is their, um, uh, uh, their symbol, and uh, the head of Athena simply um, takes the other side uh, on the coin. Uh, you have Pegasus all the time, and then uh, there are um, various small symbols uh, right next to the Pegasus. And then you have on the uh, reverse um, the head of uh, uh, helmeted Athena, on this one, uh, you have uh, the head of a cock, and here um, uh, you have a chimera, and here you have a Hermes, uh, here you have um, Helios, here you have an eagle, here you have the head of um, Silenus, and here you have a flying monkey. When we go to Peloponnese, uh, we see more cities uh, issuing coins. Um, Aegina was the first city to issue um, coinage in Europe. Uh, traditionally, uh, it is uh, known as the first city to issue coins. And in the uh, classical period, and they also adopted um, a, a, a turtle. Um, on this one, um, they um, they sometimes um, are called uh, land tortoise, but I believe um, they always meant to um, um, use um, a turtle because it's uh, the symbol of Aphrodite, and again, um, <clears throat> being um, an island. Um, city, uh, it's only normal that they um, uh, adopted a um, sea related uh, symbol. And uh, sure enough, on um, um, a bronze coin of that city, you, you see two dolphins. And um, so mostly um, turtles are um, on their coins. Arcadian League. Um, simply uh, introduce a different political system. And uh, in that political system, cities um, minted coins on their own, but they economically and politically uh, uh, interconnected. And um, you see the variations uh, on the uh, rendering of uh, all verses and reverses, yet um, politically uh, they, um, uh, they adopted a different system uh, 
and it's it's really remarkable to um, to study uh, the coinage of uh, that league. Olympia um, is a very well known um, area. It's not a city. Um, it's an um, area festival center uh, that is um, aggrandized by popular culture and um, and we know a lot about the uh, the first Olympics, how it started. We can read the um, uh, short um, history of that here, and I also put a picture of the uh, the uh, early stadium um, at Olympia here. However, interestingly, there is no mention of Olympic Games on the coins of uh, Ellis, the, the city that uh, issued these coins. There's nothing, literally. Uh, you now, how important it is to us, uh, the Olympics, uh, was not really so important uh, to the people of Ellis. This is really remarkable. And um, yes, the, um, the statue of Zeus, the famous uh, statue of uh, Zeus, uh, is represented on coins. His cult is represented in different forms, um, eagle's head and uh, thunderbolt. Uh, and, and here, um, his wife and himself on the other uh, side of the coin. But there's not even a glimpse of Olympic activity on any of the coins. Interesting. Crete, of course, is famous for um, the, uh, the, the mythology uh, of um, uh, King Minos and Minotaur, and, um, and the coin die engraver simply uh, used the various scenes of uh, the, uh, the, the mythological story on the obverses and reverses of their coins. And, um, and, and true to the nature of the classical period, there is movement we sat, and here we see uh, Europa seated on rock, a bull advancing, and she is raising her hand and telling something. Uh, it's like uh, raising her uh, thumb, simply saying, don't come to me, don't approach me. Uh, but we know the story, and the bull will not listen to her. So we um, come to um, uh, Asia, uh, as it was known at that time. Actually, the western part of Anatolia uh, used to be called um, Asia at that time. Later on, um, they abandoned that. And Anatolia is also um, a Greek word. Uh, that means the land of the east. Uh, so later on, uh, it was adopted. Uh, in place of Asia, and then Asia uh, was, um, uh, the name Asia was given to the farther part of um, uh, the continent. And um, we start in trace with the city um, Byzantium, or Byzantium. Uh, and the, the story of the city, this remarkable city, I should say, uh, is very interesting. Um, it is traditionally believed that it was founded by Pisas from Megara. Uh, of course, uh, archaeological uh, research uh, and excavations uh, proved that the city existed long before uh, the time of Pisas. Uh, anyways, uh, it is said that Pisas had consulted the Oracle of Delphi to know where to make uh, his new city. The Oracle told him opposite the blind. Uh, at the time, he did not know what this meant, but when he came upon the Bosphorus, he realized what it meant. On the Asi Asiatic um, shore was a Greek city, um, Chalcedon. Um, some people um, pronounce it as Chalcedon, but it's um, Kadıköy in, in, in modern Turkish right now. It was um, they who must have been blind because they had not seen that obvious barrier length was just a half mile away on the other side of the Bosphorus. 
So Baiza has founded his city uh, here in this uh, superior land and named it Zentian after himself. Again, this is just a mythological story. It's not true. And um, sometimes uh, I, I read some reputable um, historians and they say, uh, um, it is traditionally uh, believed that, what does that mean? It's traditionally believed. That means mythological story. And you must not simply say it is traditionally believed. And, uh, and you must simply emphasize the fact that it is a story, it's not a historical fact. Okay. Uh, if we go to uh, the, uh, the Black Sea, <clears throat> uh, Northern Black Sea shores, the, um, the most uh, remarkable city is um, Sinope. Um, the modern name is the same, Sinope. It didn't change. Um, in the last 2,500 years, if not longer. And um, the city adopted the head of eagle or um, eagle, full eagle, and eagle with um, a dolphin uh, on the reverses of their coins. <clears throat> on the overses, um, they sometimes have a head of a nymph, um, and sometimes simply uh, the head of uh, an eagle dominate the overses. Numismatically and historically, Kizikos uh, is one of the most remarkable cities in Mysia. Uh, they issued literally hundreds of types uh, in uh, electrum and uh, in silver. And they were all so different. And uh, the city was so prosperous, it continued minting coins well into uh, the third century AD. And uh, the um, numismatic legacy of the city is enough to um, uh, write about the history of the city extensively. And most of his coins, of course, carry um, uh, the representation of um, a tonny. tonny. Uh, tuna fish uh, is still harvested in uh, uh, the Marmara Sea, and uh, it is mostly exported to um, to Japan. And um, so, Japanese sushi makers uh, heavily rely on uh, the uh, the tuna fish coming from the uh, Black Sea, um, uh, the Marmara Sea region. And sure enough, it is the symbol of the city on their coins. Lamsakos is another city in that region. Again, um, uh, it became very, very prosperous um, uh, during that time. They issued um, gold coins, unlike uh, Kizikos, uh, minting um, uh, electron. Uh, they had mostly gold coins with, and, and of course, silver ones in different denominations. Lesbos um, on, uh, on uh, uh, the Aegean uh, across from Tros and uh, Mysia uh, was a very prosperous um, city together with Mytilene. Uh, they minted a lot of uh, electrum coins and uh, silver ones. Their um, uh, numismatic legacy is not as ex extensive as um, uh, Kizikos uh, and Lamsakos, yet they are very, very um, large. Uh, there is a lot to see, and um, the um, representations are um, are very different from one another. They were not shy or lazy to create different um, types uh, for each of their issue, and uh, they were very, very prolific. Ephesus is a well-known city in um, Ionia, and um, it's, um, it also um, adopted two uh, symbols of Artemis uh, B uh, and uh, a stag. On the coins of the city, um, you see um, the same types uh, with different um, 
uh, registrate names uh, on them. Uh, then uh, Miletus or Miletus, um, as we say um, in, in Turkey, um, did the same thing. Um, their chief deity was Apollo, and on the reverse was a walking uh, lion uh, looking back. And uh, on both uh, silver and uh, bronze coinage, you see uh, similar types rendered on uh, obverses and reverses. Oops, what's going on here? Okay, so um, again, uh, we are in uh, Ionia, uh, Chios. Um, this city um, uh, adopted the Quiffin um, as their front uh, or obverse uh, type, and then uh, uh, other um, figures on the reverse, mostly um, uh, quadripartite includes for quite a long time. However, uh, beside each griffin, they had something different. Um, here you have a um, sister. Here you have a bunch of grapes. Here you have a female head. Here you have an African head. Isn't that remarkable? Here you have four parts of a Pegasus. Here is a crab. And here is an all. Incredible. Uh, Phokaya uh, was uh, like um, other cities in Mysia and uh, Lesbos and Kios. Uh, they uh, issued a lot of um, electrum uh, coins, uh, many different types, but one is extremely remarkable in that it depicts the head of King Midas with um, the uh, um, ass's uh, ears. Uh, so the mythological um, story was known at that time, and, and it was somehow important for them to uh, use it as a coin type. And uh, the city certainly uh, issued uh, silver and bronze coins at the same time. Um, Knidos in uh, Caria was famous for uh, the first nude um, statue of Aphrodite. Um, according to um, uh, the ancient historians, Herodotus um, particularly, um, the uh, sculptor uh, Praxiteles created this um, artwork and offered it to certain cities, but um, many of them simply uh, didn't want to have a new um, statue. Yet the people of Knidos yeah, agreed to have it and they um, built a temple uh, for Aphrodite in a very, very uh, remarkable um, spot um, at the city. And on the coins, sure enough, you see the head of Aphrodite mostly on one side and um, head of uh, a lion on the other side. Halicarnassus is a famous city uh, for hosting uh, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the mausoleum. Um, it is strange though, to me at least, that uh, this um, uh, one of the seven wonders, the mausoleum, is never uh, shown on coins. Of course, we cannot really expect every um, yeah, every story to be depicted on coins, but you know, you want to see it, uh, to believe it, because um, when you go to uh, the, um, the location of the so-called um, mausoleum, it's not impressive. Yes, uh, it was plundered and um, uh, a lot of um, uh, architectural uh, pieces were taken to the uh, British Museum. Um, yet, 
you don't see anything remarkable in that location itself. However, I don't want to doubt um, that it was a very, very impressive um, uh, tomb. And, um, and I just want to see that it is somehow represented on coins, but um, it is not. Um, all the same, you have uh, the impressive um, standing figure of Zeus uh, Labrandos, uh, because here Zeus uh, holds a two-sided uh, axe that is called Labiris. Um, and uh, on the obverse, um, you always have the head of Apollo. Kos, um, off the coast of um, south east, east, southeastern um, uh, Anatolia, uh, was famous for the um, uh, for their hospital. Hippocrates believed to um, uh, have lived. Uh, and practiced. He was not born there, uh, but he um, uh, moved to Kos and um, founded this uh, um, hospital complex. It was just not a not not a small building, but a, a, a hospital complex. Apparently, they treated uh, a wide variety of illnesses. Um, not much is known, actually, but uh, the um, uh, the archaeological excavations uh, on the site of the uh, temple and uh, uh, and hospital um, uh, revealed a lot of uh, information about the um, extent of um, uh, treatment that was offered uh, in that area. On the coins. Um, in early period, there is no mention of this hospital. Later on, uh, you see the representations of Asclepius, especially during the Roman period, you see a lot of um, uh, Asclepius representations. Uh, and even on uh, one of the Roman coins, there is the likeness of Hippocrates uh, on the overs of a coin, but Early, um, um, early representations have nothing to do with the uh, cult of um, Asclepius and or, or um, uh, health issues. Um, but the city is extremely famous uh, for this type, uh, the naked discobolos um, or discobosol, uh, some people say. And on the reverse is the symbol of the city crab. And on this one, um, you have um, bearded um, Hercules and on the reverse, Demeter. Rhodes uh, is known, of course, for the Colossus, another um, wonder uh, of the ancient world. And, um, and uh, in most coins, uh, or in most stories, it is known as a statue, a huge statue with a um, uh, radiate crown. But on early um, coins of uh, Rhodes, uh, Apollo is, uh, is, doesn't wear uh, a radiate uh, crown. And, but on the reverse, you always have the same um, rose uh, type. Um, I remember reading an, an, an article that challenged the, um, the idea that you know, this uh, plant or flower is called rose, um, but I guess it didn't pick any ground, so numismatists continue uh, identifying this uh, flower as a rose. Lycia, um, uh, had a different political system from uh, the other um, Ionian uh, and, and other uh, regions. Um, they had certain dynasts uh, controlled over a certain uh, uh, geographical region, and uh, the coins simply um, depict the symbols of those uh, certain dynasts 
Uh, however, um, they um, they employed the earliest, or you know, some of the earliest representations of human uh, likenesses on their coins. Uh, here you have Pericles, you have Athena, you have all the other deities, uh, nymphs, uh, but not uh, the head of a living uh, ruler or uh, person. Yet on the coins of these um, dynastic uh, rulers, you see the uh, likenesses of the, um, uh, the rulers. Uh, this is uh, Pericles. This is not. This should not be confused with the uh, Pericles of Athens, um, another ruler in uh, Lycia. Uh, Pericles. Pamphylia was a prosperous um, region. Um, Sida and Aspendos being uh, two very uh, famous cities. Uh, they issued um, a lot of coins. Uh, Side mostly uh, had um, uh, pomegranate um, as its um, symbol. Uh, pomegranate is also an, an attribute of Aphrodite. Uh, it represents fertility. Um, you get one and you open it up, it becomes 1,000. So it represents uh, fertility. And on the uh, other side is the head of um, uh, Athena. And uh, Athena is uh, used on other coins of the city, um, standing, uh, but not uh, rigid. There is a, a movement. She is walking, uh, almost, um, holding um, her awl and a shield. On the reverse is an Apollo. Uh, standing, holding a laurel branch before an altar, and uh, there is an eagle uh, right next to him. And uh, in Aspendos, uh, you have two um, issues that are very well known. One is the uh, warrior advancing, and um, on the reverse, either um, a single um, uh, Triskeles or the Triskeles uh, uh, with a human uh, um, legs and a lion under, uh, under it, or they're um, combined together, uh, and turtles sometimes appear on uh, the overs and the words, or both on both sides. The other well-known type is the wrestlers. Uh, this is really remarkable. You can see all different uh, stances of wrestling. Uh, on the coinage of this city, uh, while um, a slinger uh, dominates the reverses of these uh, series. And together with uh, the, um, the slinger, you always have a Triskeles somewhere on these series. In Cilicia, um, so many cities issued coins. Um, I will only mention um, a couple of them. On this slide, I have um, Soloi. Um, in early coinage, there is um, an Amazon um, holding ball and a queer and a satire's head. And on the reverse is the symbol of the city, a bunch of grapes sometimes with um, a fly and sometimes with other um, site topics. Uh, Calendaris, uh, again, for uh, about uh, 200, 250 years, uh, used the same type. On, the, on one side, they had um, a new um, youth rider uh, holding whip and dismounting from horse. And on the other side, you have um, a goat. Um, two or three uh, huge um, hordes uh, of Calendaris coins made Calendaris uh, famous in um, the, uh, the numismatic world. Um, again, um, a couple of years ago, um, there was a, a, another um, remarkable horde that contained coins from at least seven, eight mints from the um, southern uh, Anatolian uh, cities. 
and um, and both Solo and uh, Calendar as, as well as Cide and Aspendos uh, were represented in that uh, horde. And um, I had a talk at the um, at the Coin Club um, late last year, and I'm still working on that project and uh, ho I'm hoping to um, publish um, more information about that horde soon. So ISOS um, uh, is uh, in Eastern uh, Mediterranean, uh, while Nagidos is not far from Calendares. And both um, cities uh, have similar types uh, on the obverses and their uh, reverses. Uh, but all the same, they are uh, very interesting to, uh, to study. Malos uh, and uh, Tarsos uh, were two rivaling uh, cities in uh, Eastern Mediterranean, Tarsus being the, um, uh, the metropolis uh, of um, uh, the Cilicia region, uh, the uh, crown of the King Cyanesses until uh, the Persians um, came and uh, decided to take over the region. Um, Tarsus um, uh, has the richest numismatic legacy in uh, that region, but Maulos is not too inferior to, uh, uh, to uh, Tarsus. Both cities are, um, um, are um, very well uh, represented uh, on coins, studying and, and um, Malos is lost to uh, the silt coming from the river uh, Piramos. And uh, the same is true for Tarsos. Um, it is simply overbuilt. So it's really difficult to excavate and learn about these cities, but their coins simply tell us a lot about uh, their uh, history. Cyprus uh, is an interesting uh, a place to uh, to study uh, and um, and its coinage is extensive. Um, they used a different writing system. Sometimes it's difficult to um, decipher um, some of the uh, legends on the coins of Cyprus, but they are very well um, uh, studied, and uh, there are um, some very uh, good books about them. Venetia. Um, was rich in many ways. Uh, it adopted the um, trade traditions of the late Assyrian and Babylonian kingdoms, and they carried the same tradition across the um, Mediterranean. Um, they were most likely in contact with uh, the hinterland, uh, by hinterland, I mean uh, uh, going to the east, Iran, uh, uh, India, and, and China. They were simply uh, bringing material from the east and carrying them to the west. And uh, they simply, um, that is shown uh, on their coins. They have um, both um, trade vessels and um, military vessels represented on their coins. And um, there is dolphin, um, there is um, hippocampus, uh, so that tells us that they are a seafaring uh, culture. And um, their coinage is extensive, and there is a lot to learn from them. And finally, um, to the uh, Western um, North African um, shores. Um, Kirene uh, is a famous city. Uh, we saw that um, they started issuing coins in the archaic period. They continue uh, issuing coins in the classical period with the same types. Um, Zeus someone is on uh, one side and uh, their uh, famous plant, Silphium, um, on the other side. Um, and they continued minting coinage for quite a long time. Carthage, uh, of course, has to be mentioned here. Um, a colony of the uh, uh, Phoenician people 
um, it became very, very prosperous um, in the uh, first half of the uh, fifth century BC. And, um, and it's um, constant um, struggle uh, uh, with the Italian cities. Um, both brought them uh, more wealth and caused them to lose everything. But the coinage is heavily influenced by the um, uh, Italian uh, art. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if um, it is one day discovered that the uh, coin die engravers in Sicily simply uh, created the dies for the um, uh, for the uh, rulers of Carthage uh, at some point because artistically they are very, very similar to those of um, uh, the Syracuse and Gela and, and uh, Himara coins. I have here um, a list of uh, books for further reading. Um, um, feel free to um, go over this and uh, and I'm sure there are um, hundreds, uh, hundreds of other uh, books and online resources. Um, but uh, while studying uh, ancient coins, I uh, enjoyed and benefited a lot from um, uh, Jenkins's ancient Greek coins. Um, Christopher Havjegu's uh, ancient history from coins is also interesting, but not as interesting as Jenkins's book in my view, um, you have to see how ruinous my uh, Greek coins and their values uh, volumes. Uh, and that shows how much I use these uh, monumental um, catalogs. They are small, but I call them monumental because I learned so much from David Sear. And um, this was interesting individual and uh, community, the rise of the polis. Um, by Chester Starr to read. Um, I learned a lot from him. Um, I continue reading, rereading the traders in the ancient Mediterranean. I definitely recommend that you consider um, uh, reading this book. It, you learn a lot about the Assyrian, Babylonian, or pre coinage uh, economies and how trade um, uh, took. Um, uh, importance uh, and 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 how we lost information uh, afterwards. Ancient coin collecting one by Wayne Salis is a very um, uh, informative book. Uh, the whole series he has seven books, I believe, and uh, they're all worth um, uh, reading. And lastly, uh, I uh, enjoyed, learned, and I still refer to. Um, John, um, John Mellow Jones's uh, Dictionary of Ancient Greek Coins. Uh, they are, it's, it's a very, very um, informative book, a reference book, I should say. I think um, this is all I wanted to talk about the um, classical period. If there are questions, I'll be happy to um, answer them.